I'm trying to help people out through this business model. You know, people are like, oh, Seb, what do you do, man? What do you do? And I'm like, oh, if I'm man, like, get into it. Like, fucking be a man. Throw some balls and fucking do it yourself. Like, who cares? If it fails, you learn. You're stupid not to even try. Like, anything can change within, like, six months. Righto, guys. Podcast number 26. If Seb R. Curie, how you going, man? It's great to have you. Bro. Thank you, man. Yeah. I can appreciate you getting me on. No, no, I worries, appreciate you coming, bro. It means a lot to us, boys. Mm -hmm. You know, um, how flat out you are. <laughs> What you're doing these just days. a little bit, just yeah. a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Only fans management, bro. That's your bread and butter. It is my second bread and butter. First one's e commerce. Oh, yeah, you're still yeah. running that, are you? Nah, not anymore, but yeah. that's what led me into uh, OFM. Yeah, also. yeah, yeah. I seen on your um, yeah. Instagram, you had quite a bit of a win with that a few years back. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's awesome. Had a good run, yeah, and yeah, fucking always got to jump onto the next trend. That's yeah, it, that's right, 100%. Yeah, 100%. And I guess, where do you see the OFM trend start? Did someone kind of guide you in that direction or? Well, it's actually my business partner, man. Like I was doing OFM back in the day and he came up to me and we weren't like, I didn't know him. He just messaged me on Instagram. He was like, yo, let's meet up. I need to talk. Like, I just need some help. Like for, with my own e-commerce store. And I was like, oh, say less. Met up with him, had a little bit of a chat. I liked the, at the cafe store. And he was like, yeah, well, while you're doing this side for me. Like I'm going to focus on this a little bit more just because it has such like bigger potential than mm. e-commerce. And I was like, I was like, oh, bro, like nothing's going to be e-com man. Like it's just, there's Especially, nothing. Sorry, bro. What year are you looking at? You're looking at e-commerce when, when it was in its prime too, like 2018, oh, 2020. 2023 now, probably 2018 to 2020. Yep. I was running it yep. two years. Um, and then I sort of just went down a little track of like selling like pre-built Shopify stores, like just helping like the youngins out, just like yeah, okay. get you guys started. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that was around that time. So about last year, I was still building pre-built stores and that's when my mate hit me up. I said, oh, well, what are you, what are you doing? And he was like, oh, doing this thing called like OFM. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck's this bro? Like, come on now. And he ran me through and he was like, basically just find a girl that's down the be managed. That's already doing OnlyFans. Uh, you market her on like Twitter, Reddit, like dating apps and so on, right? And I was like, okay, bro, let me know how this goes. Mm -hmm. I'll get back to you and he'll get back to me. Four months later, he goes, hey man, I've got something to tell you. And I was like, okay. Let's, let's, <laughs> I, was like, I was like, fuck this cunt. So I met up at the same cafe and he sat me down. He goes, bro, he goes, you know, when I was telling you, like I was managing this girl, I was like, yeah. And he goes, been doing 40K consistently every single month. That's insane. I was like, fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> I was like, no way. And he goes, yeah, man. He onboarded a few more models and he started making around about 80, 90K because it fucking differs, man, yeah. depending on the months. Um, and I was like, dude, that's fucking insane. And then when he, because he actually exited out of OFM um, just because of like religious reasons. And I was like, fuck, time for me to jump in, eh? So yeah. I was like, let's do it. Started doing it, started making a bit of money, uh, learn a couple of lessons. And then he messaged me, he's like, I'm coming back, bro. It's like, too too good of money, man. It's like, it's mm. just too good. So yeah, that's how I got into OFM. Yeah, man. Far away, bro. And yeah, still to this day, you're still with your business. business yeah, 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 yep. Yep, still today. Uh, we're doing smoothly. Uh, just got a few models doing roughly around about 50, 60K per month, yeah. As in like all together, bro, or separately? Oh, the, well, we split 50-50 oh, our way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. around about like 30, 25. How, how many models do you, do you have? At the moment, we've got three. 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 Yeah, yeah. it's the same, like considering how much potential it has, like for more models even, like how much of an upscale of coin in you can have a... Mm, like, yeah. yeah. Well, like, see, that's the thing, man. Like people think the more models you get, the more money you make, but it's, I would you say- You invest more time into- yeah, well, I'll say quality over quantity. Like yeah. a bunch of girls, man, they're just kind of lazy. They just yeah. don't really want to put the work in, hence why they do OnlyFans. <laughs> um, but if you can find the ones that actually want to make money, you will make money, like yep. without yep. a doubt. Yeah. yeah, that's mad. Yep. So with OnlyFans management, pretty much you're just marketing. On OnlyFans, obviously, um, your models, pretty much content all over, and they just sending you the – Photos and videos and you yep. take care yeah, of the rest. Yeah, basically, yeah. So just do, they just do 10% of the work. Wake up in the morning, look pretty, take a photo, take videos, yep. send it to us, um, take a few uh, videos for TikTok. And then we go to their TikToks, download all the videos, repurpose it on every social media, like Reddit, YouTube, Instagram. 
And then we also do like the other side, which is like the more explicit stuff on Reddit, like tube sites, which is like, like porn sites and stuff like that. Mm. I'm not sure if you got to blur that out. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so they wake up in the morning, look pretty, take a photo, send it to us and we just do all the rest. That's yes. crazy, bro. And you and your business partner, how many people do you have working underneath you? Or you more um, use the strategy where you have people from overseas, say from Asian countries. Yeah, make yeah. bulk work for you. Yeah, so we go around about 10 to 15 people. It varies as well. It depends what we need and what we don't need. Uh, and they're all in the Philippines as well, yep. um, which is pretty good. Uh, they're like robots, man. Like you tell them what to do, they do it. So there's no really fuck around. And if they fuck up, they tell you, yeah. oh, sorry, boss. Like, sorry, yeah. this. Uh, it's pretty cool. Like, True. But, yeah. So what's this? All of the work is that just um the messaging and the direct messages through OnlyFans? Yeah, basically, yeah. So they do the messaging side of things. Yep. So they we call them the sales team. Mm -hmm. They uh build relationships, build rapport with uh subscribers. Yeah. And they make sales. Yes. Yeah, and also we have another team dedicated for social media. So they repurpose all the other stuff on there and we just manage all of them. Yep. Yeah. I know your strategy looking at some of your videos is you have a low subscription rate. Mm-hmm. And then that's how you get more people um, obviously subscribing to your models. And then from there, like you said, you have people from the Philippines, you know, building real, really good report with the subscribers. And when they send the content, they're paying the, they're paying the coin like instantly. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're yeah. Just a, addicted almost. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy and it's kind of sad at the same time. Like it's like this guy doesn't know who he's chatting to and he thinks it's a girl. It's just fake, fake belief. But mm. it's, it's crazy to me, man. Like I was looking at one of the accounts the other day and there was a guy that says like, am I talking to an agency or like a salesperson? Like, he goes, I don't really care. He goes, I don't care. Like the facade's not going to be broken. Like as long as I see, I see the videos and photos, like I'm chilling. I was like, <laughs> I was like, bro, this guy is just fucking doesn't care. I was like, that's crazy. Because I was going to ask, ask you that bro. If, like that's a fear coming in the future that people are going to realize that, you know, they're not actually just talking to the female. It's yeah. just someone from overseas just chained them behind the screen. Like, yeah. obviously, but obviously hearing that, bro, don't it's care. Not much of a- no, they don't care, man. As long as they see what they want to see, they don't really care. That's insane, eh? It's just like, if you go to like, you know, like those explicit sites, like I think we've all been there before and you just type up your favorite actress and you see them and you're like, oh, fucking get one out. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, it's just the same thing. Like they see a girl on TikTok, they think she's pretty and they go, oh, well, fucking what's the difference? The only difference is they're just paying money. Mm. Yep. But even with people seeing it on explicit sites, they still go the step further if they really enjoy that that uh that actress, and they try to find their OnlyFans and their fansly or whatever that they're marketing on, and they still just pay money. Like it doesn't really matter. Like at the end of the day, man, like people just there's money floating around everywhere. So, yeah, right. It's crazy, and like the way they're printing it these days, eh? Money. It's almost like it's nothing. Yeah. Well, that's another concept too. <laughs> like a lot of people think that girls make a really large amount of money. They do. Some do. And those are the hard workers and the smart ones. Yep. The ones that are like lazy, don't do shit, bro. They, they make at most 500 to 2000 USD a month. Mm. And that's fuck all in the, mm. in the industry, man. And even like you were saying, bro, in one of your videos that it doesn't come down at the end of, oh, at the, end of the day, it doesn't come down to who's the hottest, mm -hmm. you know, female out there or the most attractive. It's, the most dedicated and hard work. Yeah, that's it. Like any girl that is willing to put in the work and actually wants to make money will make money without a doubt. Like I've been through multiple models that are like good looking, like decently hot and they just tank. Like <laughs> they just think they're so hot. They're like, oh, I don't have to listen to you. Yep. I don't have to do this. Like guys come to me in person anyway. Like what do I have to do this? And it's just like, oh, well, move on next. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yep. So. Missed opportunities. Yeah, 100%. So how, how long do you think you see this going for? Do you think it's going to stop eventually or you like to keep running it? Oh, uh, personally, I'll keep running it for a bit. Mm -hmm. Just keep milking it, man. Like yeah. people just think oh, it's going to be saturated and this yeah, and yeah, that. Yeah, but so stupid, man. It's mm. the, the way I think about it is if you're established and you actually have really good results and you provide a really good service, you'll outlast everyone. If you're a new agency owner that comes in and you're terrible at what you're doing, you're not going to last whatsoever. Like girls can smell bullshit from a mile away. Yeah. Um, so back to that question, man, like 
it will last forever. It just depends on how good you are at marketing and scaling and shit like that. So it will last forever. Yeah. All right, Jordy and I will have a, ch- a chat having a convo about it because we obviously want to maybe invest in it potentially in the near future. Yeah, for sure. And one thing I actually mentioned with Jordy is like, you know, the way AI is going, mm-hmm. it's probably a new source of creating content. Like, yeah. You won't even need a model, to be honest. Like it's a bit scary in a way, but. Yeah. Is, that's, that, is, is that something that's come to your mind? Or? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say, I know there's a few guys that are testing with like AI models. Like for example, there's a guy on YouTube, he's like, um, he's testing a marketing strategy through Tinder and he's like using his model's pictures. He'll get like a, a hundred pictures of his model and then he'll get like an AI to regenerate those photos into different photos. So he can create multiple Tinder accounts and Bumble accounts yeah. and he can like make her boobs bigger, make them smaller, <laughs> make her smile, make that's her upset. Crazy. And it's just like, that's, that's insane. Like for the OnlyFans side of things, it will take a bit, I reckon, because you've got to get past the verification. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you're going to get past that with, or maybe you could just fake the ID, but I'm not sure if they do like a whole like background check to see if you're actually legit. Yep. But yeah, I, there's already people using AI like with their SOPs and just their systems in general, just trying to automate everything. Yep. Uh, yeah, true. And that's another thing, like a lot of the videos I've seen is you creating content for other people to try you know, you want to see just give me that free information, bro. Yeah. Trying to teach people like, oh fam, this is it. Like it's crazy how some people <laughs> probably see that. And they do. They probably just think it's bullshit, man. It's, yeah. At the end of the day, like, you know, without doing a good background check of who you are, bro, like they can just see you as like, oh yeah, someone else is trying to sell bullshit online and make money, which is another big issue at the moment is people just making all these online courses and people are buying yeah. thing that you're going to get rich quick. Yeah. So I guess- is that kind of like, do you enjoy creating content and trying to help others? Is- yeah, of course. Of course, man. Of yeah. course. If, if you don't, like, what's your mission in life? You know yep. what I mean? Like, we all have a purpose. My purpose is just to help people out. And it's just, I'm trying to help people out through this business model. You know what I mean? Like, people are like, yo, Seb, what do you do, man? What do you do? And I'm like, OFM. OFM, man. Like, get into it. Like, I'm giving out the source for free. Like, why, yeah. aren't, you, why aren't you taking it? And they just... Oh yeah, but there's so much other shit. Yeah, there is, but like, bro, like I'm giving you the fundamentals to start. And if you want to learn, like join the group, like I'm active, you know what I mean? Like I've, me and my business partner are active. People in the group chat are active, like they're already making like tens of thousands of dollars. Like, it's just like, you gotta be stupid not to join and like learn for free or take my advice on YouTube and Instagram. You know what I mean? It's just like, you're dumbfounded. You know, it's just like, why not? You know what I mean? Is it Telegram you use for yeah, your yeah, group? Telegram, yeah, is yeah. exclusive content being put into that group? Yeah, for well, them it's to just learn? like a networking thing, man. Like, yeah. say, for example, if you did it and you're making $20,000 a month and you come in, you're like, what, what the fuck do I do? Either I respond or you respond. And it's yeah. just like, all right, you get value and everyone just shares value. And I do like weekly calls as well. Uh, like every Thursday, everyone yeah. jumps in, has questions, answer it, smack it, smack it out. And yeah, it's just, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, it's dope, has, bro. This mindset that you've had, obviously you've got a really driven mindset, bro, especially Appreciate when it. you first discovered, um, you know, e-commerce online. I like to dial it back a bit, back to where you started, like where you're from then. Have you always had this mindset or this come later on in life? To be honest, man, like originally I'm from like Melbourne in Victoria and I moved up here with my mom and my sister with my stepdad at the time. Uh, and then I was just like, what can I do to make money, man? Like, it's just like, fuck, what do I do? Like, I don't want to work a job. I hate working a job. I can't lie. I can't let someone above me tell me what to do. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of guys can relate to that. It's just like, fuck, like, yeah, get the fuck out of my way, man. And um, I worked a few jobs and I was always surrounded by like small-minded people. And they're always just like, oh, you can't do that. Can't do this. And just driven me more to like prove them wrong. And I stumbled across e-com, how did I stumble? Uh, on YouTube, actually. And I was just learning like every day, watching it for six months. Like I'd be up till 4 a.m. every school night. And I was just grinding, writing notes. I got a whole notebook, man, just of like e-com notes, how to run ads, how to do this, how to do that. And obviously I tried a few products myself, failed, lost a lot of money. Um, and then I stumbled one, stumbled across one product and that was like the beer snorkel. I'm not sure you like yeah, Troy yeah, Candy yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I stumbled across that. I did massive market research and I was like, okay, the only person 
that like is doing this is Troy Candy that has a face behind the brand. Everyone else has no face behind the brand, so no one really trusts them as much as Troy Candy. Yeah. So I was like, fuck it. <laughs> I'll be the face of my brand. So I started it and it was called Only Chug. And my persona on there was called Papa Chug. So everyone, <laughs> bro, would just call me Papa Chug, like on TikTok, <laughs> Instagram, in person. Like it was just just a massive persona. And um no one knew that at, at first. Like no one at my school knew that. Um, so when I was at school, I was like secretly working on the site at the back of the classroom. Like every single day I was in school, bro. Like I, I, I'll be honest, man. I'm terrible at school. You'll get my grades, all C's, all D's, everything failed. Um, I was sitting in the back of the classroom, do, building my website, trying to learn new shit. Every do, every time at like uh, recess and stuff, like in lunch, I'd be that weird kid, bro. They'll be like by themselves on the computer, man. And mm. I was like, fuck, I don't want to be like this forever, eh? So I was just like praying it would just work. And bro, I ordered my first batch of like the snorkels to my cousin's house because I didn't want anyone to know. So I was like, fuck. All right, order it to my cousin's house. I was sitting with my auntie and I was like, fuck, I just paid $600 for this batch. I was like, I hope I don't get scammed on Alibaba. I was like, shit my pants. <laughs> Came in two weeks later and bro, me and my cousin were just like flipping out. We're like, bro, what the fuck? Like there's all these snorkels on the floor, bro. We're like, holy shit. Took like this, this sick ass photo that like I still look back on. It's just me covered with like snorkels, head to toe. And it's just my face popping out. It's like, mm. like <laughs> and I was just like, fuck yeah. And then uh, I finished the website. Then I started creating TikToks. TikToks took around about a few months to blow up. Say like four or five months. Every, every video is getting like a thousand views. Terrible, right? Yeah. And then dude, the first one got like over a hundred thousand, like, like the first one to blow up got a hundred thousand and then it just kept on going, kept on going, kept on going. And the money was just fucking coming in like consistently. I was like, holy shit. And I was like, nah, this is the way, this is the way, you know? And I just started pumping it, pumping it. Everyone at school started to recognize me. Like they're like, Yo, I see you on TikTok, bro. And I was like, nah, I don't know what you're talking about. You know? <laughs> I, was like, I don't know. I was doing some cringy shit, man. And then, um, yeah, it got to a point. It got really big and I started like, dipping out of school just to pack orders and shit. Mm. And um, the principal called my mom one, one day and he was like, well, your son doesn't really come to school anymore. Like, well, what's he doing? And my mom's like, honestly, I don't know what he's doing. Like he's always in his room, just like <laughs> leaving out of the house back and forward. And then I told him, I we came into the office. I remember walking up with my mom and he was sitting in his chair and I sat down and he goes, where well, he said, mate, he goes, if you don't like come to school and learn, you have to earn. And I was like, I am earning. I was like, I am. I was like, I'm earning more than you. And he was like, you're lying. And I was like, look, man. And it was like the first term back um, to school at that time, which was in February. And I said to him, I was like, I looked him dead in the eyes. And I was like, if I don't make 50K by June, I was like, I won't leave school. And he goes, all right, deal. And I was like, oh, say less. So very Two weeks later, I made 50 grand, bro. Fuck, and I was yeah. like, I was like, I was like, I was like, bro. I was like, I walked what, what up. What do you reckon? I, dude, I walked up to the office and I just was like, went to my Shopify analytics and I was like, yeah, look at that. And he was like, he was like, what the fuck? He was like, dude, you're like 17, man. And I was like, yeah, I'm not coming here anymore, man. And I was like, I'm out. So doing that for a few years. And then, yeah, bro, like started doing other shit as well. Like in, with uh, like other products and stuff like that. Had another one called Arise Leo, which was a, a gym blender. Yeah. And then, yeah, that blew up immensely. Just fucking bro, millions of views, every single video. Like the biggest True. one I got is like 15.4 mil or something Holy shit like that. Shit. Yeah. All these videos, bro, just like you just blending it and people just being like- Oh, well, I like, took I took like um what I was doing with Only Chug and I put my face with it and I was like, can people trust you a lot more if your face is in it, man? Yeah. Like no, no one's going to trust a fucking a video and it's just a product. Like yeah. but if you flip the screen and you show the product in your face and you're smiling, people are going to be like, oh, okay, I can trust this even more because they know who's behind the brand. They know who's pushing it and they know that the product works because I'm fucking promoting it. You know what I mean? So yeah, it was crazy like that. That's unreal, bro. And just from there, you just kept scaling and scaling. We got to the point where you, did you get to a point where you were like struggling or is that when your business partner then reached out to you giving the oh, idea of it was like a, was it? it was like about a year later man okay and i was like from when when everything failed and stopped i was like fuck oh, i don't want to do this anymore so i was like building shopify stores for people and then he hit me up because he wanted to start his own and then that's how we met and then yeah just 
Bro, it's been good ever since, man. It's yeah, just sweet. it's fucking chilling. Yep. Yeah, man. <clears throat> so what is it, what do your family and that think of um I know we were talking to um some other people and they reckon like the religious side of things with the old fam and that, like yeah. they don't really know if they like it or not. Like what does your surroundings think of it? Like are they very supportive or Oh man, like look, I'm Italian, so like they're kind of religious, not really. Mm. My my nan is probably the most religious out of all of us. Um like, bro, my whole family's open. Like, yeah, man. Oh, bro, my family don't care. Yeah, sweet just like, Whatever. Oh, he looks like girls all the time. I'm just like, oh, I don't do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know? But uh, no, nah, they're pretty chill. I don't really care. Yeah, sick. Yeah, that's good, bro, for sure. I just know that those photos of you, bro, on the couch and it's just all the packaging. Oh, on the Instagram? You. Yeah, yeah, bro. yeah, yeah man. Come, bro. That was mad, eh? Me and George just like, oh, just dreaming like, of that day to come, <laughs> eh? Bro, just- it's, 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 it's around the corner for you boys, man. Like, what you gotta do is just take action and that's what you guys are doing. You got the potty here and just keep going, man. Like, fuck, that's what you gotta keep doing. What What do you think for your e-commerce, what do you think is the number one thing to focus on? Is it marketing, do you believe, or the product? Both, both, man. Uh, product and branding for sure. Um, you gotta have a perceived value for what you're trying to sell. And if the product's shit, no one's gonna buy it. But if you can make it seem like it's good, everyone's gonna buy it. Yep. Um, that's like anything. It's like courses, man. Like, fuck. Like, you you sell the dream to these people and they buy it. Like, they want the results really quick. So that's why they buy your product. Like, for example, the blender. You hold down the button for three seconds, it blends your shake. Like, it's just quick, easy, efficient. And the branding was immaculate as well. Like, just how I branded everything from the store to my Instagram to my TikTok, how I made the videos. Just, yeah, just focus on your branding and the product, yeah. Yeah. yeah, with the um, products that you ordered from Alibaba, was there yeah. any like customizing um, in regards to branding on the products you did, or was it just straight? First from batch. The ones you got? First batch was just straight off the fucking the rails from the, from the factory. <laughs> yeah, it was just clear, nothing on it. And then as soon as that batch sold out, I was like, all right, branding time. Yeah, and the snorkel had the branding, the packaging had the branding, and then I had my own custom packaging to go within the like the snorkel to go in, and then yeah, just. Yeah, just mad branding. So you would recommend definitely not going straight from the 3PL, the supplier, straight to your customer. You definitely bring it to yourself. Or oh, custom, custom branding. Depends, bro. Depends. Like I was going to drop ship those and I was like, oh, fuck it. I believe in myself. I can mm. do it. It's really high risk, but it's really high reward because you cut down on shipping costs and you yep. and you cut down on like shipping times as well. Yeah. You still rely on AliExpress? You didn't have any dramas with them? There's a, few, there's a few like mix bit of controversy on AliExpress uh, in terms of like quality of product. Well, not really. Like I didn't, like I said, I didn't really drop shipped and I got yeah, everything okay. customized. So if I wanted something changed, I could change it. Yep, yep. Um, so I can't really speak on that. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah we've we definitely um, looked into it. Um, we've built a few stores and we've gone the drop shipping route, but we found that it def- definitely, like you said, would be better to, Get yourself in the camera, go all over your branding, and that's something we definitely want to look into further. Yeah, but yeah, like like you said, just ordering products to yourself, it is a high risk having shit and like not being able to sell it. So yeah, yeah. it pushes you to sell it. You yeah, know, yeah, you yeah, see it all sitting around you, and you're yeah. like, yeah, fuck, okay, here it is, man. Yep. Yeah. Did you? It was was it more like the drive that you won that money that pushed you through doing e-commerce, or did you actually have a passion for it? Oh, at the start, I had a passion for it, and I. Like if I wanted to now, I'd still get into it. Like it's just a fun thing, man. Yeah. Um, money not really a big thing for me. It's more so the freedom. I can yeah. do whatever I want, travel wherever I want, take my girlfriend wherever I want. You know what I mean? It's just shit like that, bro. Like money, but money is like the thing that can get you those things. So yeah. you have to get money to do that. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people don't really realize that. They're like, oh, money's not happiness. But I'm like, yeah, well, you can do a lot of fucking money, things with money, man. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the biggest thing thing with money bros it does give you freedom yeah for sure it does yeah and obviously that's what we're chasing is to have just you know at the end of the day being a millionaire would be the overall goal and be amazing but if you don't have to work for someone else and yeah for know, sure pick the time of day of when you want to work and where you want to go i think that's honestly the yeah but see the thing there as well bro like if you want to work for yourself you're always on the clock 24 7 man yeah. like and that's what my girlfriend's starting to realize too. Like me and my business partner will be up to like 4 a.m., bro, just trying to like fix shit out. Yeah. Come to bed, come to bed. I'm like, 
<laughs> working. Like, let me, let me get this shit done. Like, you want to be where I want to take you? Like, I need to get this shit done. Like, I'm not going to get it done if I'm laying in bed, you know what I mean? Yeah, fair enough. With LFM, bro, I'd like to mm-hmm. dig into that a lot more. With what's your, what do you find your best strategy is to find models? Personal connections. Yeah. 100%. Personal connections. Fuck, fucking trying to outreach the people on Instagram and shit like that. Personal connections is where it's at. Uh, if you didn't know a girl from your high school, reach out to her for sure, bro. Like if you already, well, if you were a contour in high school, she's definitely not going to fucking let you manage her. <laughs> but if you were a good person and like you're nice and she know and she knows and trusts you, you'll secure her a hundred percent. Also just like network with other people. Like for example, like I said before, like link up with like influencers or some shit like that and get them to find your models or even get your boys to find models that they know because they're mutually friends with someone that knows an OnlyFans girl. And then that OnlyFans girl comes to you because your friend reached out to them. And then it's just, it's just like, just like a fucking massive circle. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. uh, so yeah, personal connections, hundred percent is the way to go. If you're trying to secure a really good model that isn't going to fuck you over. Yep. Yeah. And I guess if, for someone in a situation where they don't know anyone or they're really struggling to find any personal connections, what's another route you can take? Look, uh, this, Two ways I would suggest is just outreach on Instagram, not on an agency account, like where you make your know, agency page, you get a way lower response rate. Um, message on your personal account, make sure you have decent followers and have a really good page set up, like some good quality photos. No, none of those photos of like you holding up a fish and shit like that. Like no yeah. one's gonna like <laughs> let you manage them if you're doing that. <laughs> um, another good way is the fake model method, which are. Uh, I'll give a shout out to my boy, Jesse. He was the one that came up with that. Uh, so basically all you do is you just make a, a fake page of another OnlyFans girl, a little bit smaller. You don't want to obviously get like Riley Reed or someone and you, yeah. just, and you <laughs> make a fake page about that. Yeah, yeah. Just find another girl that's already doing OnlyFans, only has like 2,000, 3,000 likes on her OnlyFans page. Get, a, one, get one of her photos from her Instagram account, make it your profile picture, change the name. Obviously not the same name as hers because- uh, you would get in a bit of trouble with that. So just come up with a, like a fake name, like uh, Sarah Flowers or some shit. You know what I mean? Um, make a bio uh, stating where you like, where you live and where you actually want to outreach to. So for example, I would have uh, Sarah Flower, 19 Brisbane, Australia. Uh, and then I would outreach to girls within the Brisbane area. And I'll just be like, oh, hey girl. Like I'll, like, I'll DM them. I'll be like, oh, hey girly. Like, I just came across your page. Like, <laughs> yeah. this is such a, like, I love your body, whatever. Like, give them compliments. Girls love compliments. If you give them compliment, they're going to respond. And obviously, they're going to see that another girl's just complimented them compared to a guy. And they're going to respond to you way more than if you reached out to them on, like, your main page. But yep. it, both of them still work. Um, the girl one, you'll get a, like, the fake model method, you'll get a way bigger response rate but it's a little bit harder to close because you have to then direct them from that fake model page to either your main Instagram account or your agency account. And then it's just like a whole different funnel, but still works. Personal connections as well, like I said, Um, and just use your main Instagram account. Yeah. Yeah, So is this um, fake um, model account you're making? Is this just like your message to them to recommend your agency? Yeah, basically. To to run theirs as well. So you're just saying like, Voff Media runs my OnlyFans account and just suggesting it to them saying they're good or whatever. Yeah. So basically how it goes is like, you just do that opening message, um, find something that you can compliment her on, like her hair, her eyelash, her eyebrows or her eyelashes or some shit like that, or her body. Just be like, hey girly, I really like your eyelashes. Where'd you get them done? She'll message you straight away within like fucking 10 minutes. She'll be like, oh my God, girl, thank you. I love your, <laughs> we'll just- Bro, they won't even look at your account. They'll just say some stupid shit. They'll just be like, oh, hey, Gilly, I love your body too. And you're, But your account's private, so they can't see. So it's mm. just like, you lying ass bitch. You know what <laughs> I mean? But um, they'll see, they'll say, they'll say something back, then you just keep going back and forward. And then how you direct it is like, oh, girl, I see you do OnlyFans as well. And they'll be like, yeah, girl, I've been doing it for a bit. And you'll be like, oh, like how much money do you make? And they'll be like, oh, I only make like $2,000 a month. You're like, girl, what? I make like 20, 25, 30, 40, blah, 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 whatever fucking number you want to pull out of your ass. So then- She'll be like, oh my God, girl, like how, how you do that? And you'd be like, oh, well, I've been with an agency and they've been helping me grow, et cetera, et cetera. And she'd be like, and if she's interested, she'll ask more about the agency. But if she's not, 
She'll be like, oh, girl, I can't believe you give like away 50% or 40% or whatever percent you're taking from the models. But um, you can tell by that message if they're interested, if they go, oh, what agency is it? Or like, they're like, oh, girl, like don't do that. You know what I mean? But if they're interested, all you got to say is like, yeah, okay, girl, like I'll message my, my manager and I'll get him in touch with you and then wait like a few minutes and message her on your main account and be like, hey, so-and-so told me about you. Uh, let's jump on a call together. Let's uh, get this up and running for you. And that's how you go about the fake model method. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. So what, what is the, like the general, like preferred, like, um, what was that? The like percentage split between your, um, fan and your, not your fan, your mm-hmm. um, model and your agency. Uh, for me, 50, 50. Yep. Uh, some do 25, some do 30, some do 40. I know some guys in Europe do like 70, 80. It's crazy when you take 80%. It's, yeah, I was just like, nice. whoa, that, that's a bit extreme in, in my eyes. 50% is fair. Um, just because the girl doesn't really have to do too much. She just has to make content. And then the agency, if they're a good agency, will do the rest of the work. Um, but some agencies kind of freeload. And they just bullshit their way mm-hmm. around. And they're like, we do this, we do that. So we need to take 50%. But in reality, they're just really relying on the girl to yeah. do all the work, which is the fucked up thing. It's just like, you can't be doing that. Would you recommend if you're starting out to go straight into 50, 50 or you reckon you should jump back a bit and go. To be honest, uh, to be honest, man, if you don't know what you're doing and uh, you want to learn, do it for free. That would be your best, best way into the space. Just go, Hey, um, I'm starting out as an OnlyFans manager. I really like want to get into this space or some shit like along those lines, message them. And then, Obviously, they're going to say yes if they're interested. They'll say yes straight away because they don't have to pay you anything. You just be like, I want to work for you for free. I want to learn and grow my skills. If I get you to X percent or or X revenue, um, can we talk a deal out then? And she'll either say yes or no, but either way, it's a win for you because you still learn. Um, But it's a bit of a a loss because you don't make any money, but you still learn. Yeah, that way doing it um, free, you're able to build a portfolio and like show proof for your next models that you're contacting and trying to- Essentially sell yourself to Yeah, them. exactly, yeah. man. Yeah, like there's a few guys in my group and I'm like, yo, like fucking just start off free, man. Because then when you get free and you actually do like really good results. So like, for example, if you're new and you do like what, I'll say like a thousand dollars a day, like that's pretty that's that's good. Like that I reckon the average should be like at least two, two to four thousand dollars a day. Like if you have a good model. But like the average, some people like go from like five to one point two a day, which is still good. Like, don't get me wrong. Bro, it's nearly like what, like nearly thirty grand a month just from that, you know. And if you're doing a thousand dollars a day, yep. Um, and that's USD as well, so it bumps up even more to like forty five grand yeah. Australian dollars or some shit like that, depending on the currency. Nice. But um, yeah, just work for free, gather social proof, which is just like their statistics and shit. Post that on your main page or like your agency page, just to show that you're actually doing it. And then yeah. If you do a really good job, obviously their friends are going to refer you to their friends and their friends are going to refer you to their friends. And it's just like, like I said before, just a massive circle, man. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. And do you think, do you need to have an agency Instagram page made or you can just do all of it through your personal? Uh, agency page is good for social proof because when girls like check you out, they're like, oh, well, does he actually do it? Oh, like yeah. what? But they, they see you have like an agency page. It's pretty clean, like pretty well built. Like, okay, like, is somewhat into the space. Like I can trust them a little bit more. Um, some people say get a website. I say it doesn't really matter because no girl really like what one out of 10 girls are going to look at that website. You know what I mean? They don't really give a fuck, but it just builds that more social, like more social proof and just makes you seem more legitimate. Like if you have an agency page, in my opinion. Yep. So say you've reached out to the model, either on your personal account or you've made, made the fake model account. Mm -hmm. The girl goes through with it, gets in contact with you, you organize a deal, she's done, signed, going ahead with it. What's the process from there? Do they then give you all their detail logins for OnlyFans and then you're posting on their pages from there or what's the process? So the process for that, right? So like you said, do the fake model, personal outreach, whatever, jump on a call, onboard them, sign them. And then from that point on, all we ask from the model is just the OnlyFans login. That's it. We just go OnlyFans login. That's all we need. We don't need anything else. Like if you have a Twitter account, you can send it to us if you want. Either way, we'll just make a new one. So it doesn't really matter. Like all we need is just that 
OnlyFans account login. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's really all you need. <laughs> yeah, righto. Yeah. And I guess from there on, you just keep communicating through Instagram or you then get their number or- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah. definitely take it off Instagram. Suggest either WhatsApp or their phone number. I started to use just iMessages because girls are really on iMessages most of the time. Yep. Um, some girls have like their notifications mute on Instagram or like WhatsApp or some shit. But if you text them on messages, it's just like, okay, they see it. It's like, ding, and they're yeah. like, oh, fuck, let me, let me get in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, and they yeah. message and they get back, back and forward. But yeah, just get the number as soon as possible. It should be like the first thing. Like you get, you jump on the call with them and then you go, all right, send me your number and we'll make it, we'll create a group together. And then you just create a group and you just start chatting. Yep. I know you ran through earlier all the social media platforms you post on to yeah, yeah. feed people into the OnlyFans, but- What's probably the top three you recommend? Say TikTok, Twitter. Yep, TikTok for sure. TikTok, Reddit, and then Tube Site. Tube Site. Yeah. Okay. I haven't heard of that one. What's that one, bro? Is that like more like not so much restrictions as well, or? Oh, it's just Pornhub, man. Like all oh, those, okay. like yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Oh, Tube, right. Like Tube Sites is just like the broad general of oh, just like you, sorry. Like, yeah, just yep. all those porn sites. Um, all you got to do is just. Get the PPV videos, cut it up, make like little teasers, don't show too much. And then you just upload them with a watermark of their custom domain. So when people see it, they're like, oh, okay, I'll type it up in like the Google fucking URL. Mm -hmm. And then they go to there and it funnels them straight to the OnlyFans page. Yep. 100%. And with making, obviously, people paying your model that has tax work with the income you're getting from payments. Yeah, well, see, I don't really do that side of things. It's more so my boy, Jesse, my business partner. He's really financially, like, intelligent with that. Um, but we pay 25% tax. He just set up a company, and instead of paying, like, 45, we just pay 25. So he, well, I can't really answer all that because I don't really know too much about it. Yep. He, I, I just go- He's found a bit of a loophole anyway. Yeah, yeah. That. It's just, bro, you can deduct everything as well, man. Like- um, we could buy them like an Airbnb for the night. It's just deductible. Um, even their dinner, deductible. Toys, lingerie, everything deductible. Just, yeah, deduct pretty much everything. Yep. 100% sure. So, yeah, because you're able to deduct it, is that because um, you've actually registered like your agency as a business through yep. uh, yeah, yeah, government? Yeah, through an accountant, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, so we, basically all we did was just go through an accountant, pay yep. them like two grand to set everything up for us. And then, yeah, just get a bank account, connect that to there. Money comes in. Um, we, we obviously take 25% out of that, put it in a different account for tax. And then we just, me and my boy Jesse, we just have our funds together. And then say, if I want to take out 500, he'll have to take out 500. Yeah, right. And it's just like that. Yeah, so yeah, it's mate. just pretty easy that's like fine. that. Yeah. 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 It's pretty nice. For sure. Yeah, that's awesome, bro. Yeah, LFM. It's crazy how how much money can end up how much money you can make on it and like the opportunity that's there for sure. Mm -hmm. But putting that aside for now, bro, I like to get, get to know you a bit more personally, like travel, bro. Have you done much of that or bro, something you're looking into? I want to travel a lot more for sure. Yep. Like I want to go like Bucharest, Croatia, like all those like third world countries, like also Greece, Italy. Yep. Um, I want to see family members in Italy as well. Uh, Dubai is a big one. I want to go to Dubai. Like that'd be mad. Like everyone's going there. Why can't I? <laughs> so yeah, I was just like, I want to go there. But where I've been is New Zealand and uh, the Cook Islands. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Those are the two places I've been. Yeah, Matt. Is, is that something you're looking in the future to maybe become a tax resident of a tax-free country? So, you know, I think- 100%. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. think, I think everyone should if you're going to be making decent money. Yep. Do you play any sports, bro? Or I used to. Up? Not anymore. Um, I used to do AFL for a bit. I did the state team uh, in Brisbane when I was younger. And then played rugby in New Zealand for a bit, like for the first 15. And then after that, came back, didn't play any sport, bro. Just, just full mind energy. Yeah, just Work straight money season. business. That's it. Just, yeah, money. Yeah. Oh, but right now, all I really do for like activity wise is like Muay Thai. Like same like Harper. Yep. Um, yeah, that's really good for that, for the mind. It's really good. Bro. Yeah. For sure. We'll kick into future manifestations, brother. Pretty much what are your goals for the next five, 10 years that you're manifesting you want to make reality? Oh man, a lot of things, a lot of things. Uh, like I said, just freedom in general. I just want my own place. 
uh, nice car, happy life, just everything that you probably want as well. It's just the basics. I don't really need too much. Travel, have a good fucking healthy relationship with my girl. That's it, man. Nice house. Looking over the, the city and then also another house like in but fuck nowhere. Mm. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, just chill, Escape man. Route, yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Is, some, is it a place here you generally like to look at getting? Nah, just like anything. Definitely want to move out, yeah, move yeah. out of town. Yeah, well, over here, man, like just anything, like at least like high high floors, bro. Yeah, like, 100. We're on the 80th floor right now, bro. Yeah. This is pretty nice, eh? Yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> it's gorgeous, But like, bro. imagine you get like a sub penthouse or a penthouse, you know what I mean? That would be pretty mint. That'd be um, wicked, 100%. Uh, and then, yeah, and then the buttfuck area, bro, just massive land with a nice-ass house. Yeah. Get a few dirt bikes, bro, just fuck around, That would eh? be wicked, <laughs> eh? Just having all the boys over and you're out in the farm or something, massive property, just riding around quads oh, all day on the piss or that's whatever. It, yeah. That's it, yeah. Like, I'm not really like – Big into like all all that stuff, eh? But like, I will. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like if I have the house and like the massive land and all the toys I want, bro. Like, yeah. who wouldn't? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, definitely want to do that in the future for sure. Yeah, sick, yeah. sweet, bro. And you feel a lot more home up in Brizzy or Melbourne still? Oh, well, I haven't been in Melbourne for ages, man. Like, I moved up when I was like, what, like eleven, twelve. So I haven't been down there ever since. Only to see my nan, but even then, like, fuck. Uh, rather up stay up here there's yeah. a lot more people making money up here especially like our age um and it just pushes you like just to fucking keep up with everyone bro yeah. like, and obviously you get those people that just like don't do shit and you just try to stay far away from them hence why i don't really go back to melbourne because everyone just knows each other and they're all either junkies from my ends or they just do nothing with their life but obviously there's a few people that do so stuff with their life but yeah yeah it doesn't so have you got all your boys in your inner circle or whatever on the same train as you like grind and yeah, well, a few, a few. So, I've, bro, uh, I've been through a few friend groups. I can't lie, man. Like, it's hard to find the ones that actually want to stick around and make money. Hundred. And like, when I did ecom, um, bro, massive breakup with the boys. A eh? back then, I was making a fuck ton of money. All the boys were around. I was boys with them before I even did ecom, right? But then ecom and the money kind of amplified everything. Like, bro, I bought my first car. Like. Cause my mom bought my first car when I first came up here as like a gift. And then I saved up, bought my own car. And everyone's like, what the fuck? Like, how's this car? Like I was still in high school. And everyone's like, how the fuck? Like you're 17, bro. Like how the fuck are you buy your first car? And it was like 15 grand. And I was like, I was like, bro, just econ, man. Like it's just chilling. And then when I went down that really rough patch that I mentioned earlier, man, um, just everyone just started disappearing and it was just like a massive fuckery, bro. And I was like, dude, just shows real true colors of everyone. No one, I just, it's just hard, bro. It's just like, fuck, like, you think everyone, you think everyone's like your friend and then when shit goes south, it's just like, oh, okay, like, fuck, like, you didn't stick around, you didn't stick around. It's like, what the fuck do I do? Yeah. So I had like a massive period just by myself, which was awesome. Can't even lie. It was the fucking best thing of my life. Could do whatever I want. Didn't have to fucking worry about like, hey, bro, you, you want to come to GYG with me? You know what I mean? Like, I can go there and do it myself. You know what I mean? Um, Builds a lot of character and resilience as well. Uh, took me a bit to find another friend group, found another friend group. And then, yeah, from there, kind of uplifted each other and then found another friend group. And then, yeah, bro, just fucking banging out, making money and shit like that. That's, that's what sweet. That's, right. that's what you want. Yeah. That's it mad. just takes time with everything. Um, but, yeah, all comes together soon. Yep. Oh, bro, to be honest, man, you're only 20, bro, and the life you're living is something that some people will never experience. To be honest. Yeah, it's, it's a crazy, crazy thing to think, thing like, like that, that, eh, man? I can't it's, believe you're only 20, bro. Like, yeah. 100% thought we were talking like 20, It's going to be like a couple of years older Easy. than us. Yeah. <laughs> Just told us off camera, he's 20 years old. Damn. Yeah, 2020. 20, uh, uh, turned 21 in January. If anyone wants to buy me a fucking present. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, nah, boys. Like, it's crazy to think that there's people out there that just have really just don't have any self-belief like they have nothing like they just don't want to do anything with their life or yeah. they have like a dream and there's just people that just put them down and they just listen to them it's just like bro like fucking be a man you know what i mean like grow some balls and fucking do it yourself like who cares if it fails you learn and what's the worst thing right you, you're so young if you lose money you can make money again um if you fail you can learn from your mistakes and retry again and not do those mistakes and it's just like you're stupid not to even try. Like 
even like my mate the other day, like we were talking, he wants to start his detailing business. And he was just scared. He was like, bro, like, what if it doesn't work? I was like, bro, I'll be fucking pissed at you if you didn't do it than if you did and failed. And he was like, nah, you're right, you're right. He was like, I have to do it. So fucking, I hope you do it. I hope you fucking do it. But um, mm. yeah, um, it's just people just have too much self-doubt and just all the voices around them, they get in their head and they start to believe it. And it's just like, it's kind of evil in a way. Yeah, bro. Just everyone try to bring everyone down. It's like, oh, there's a guy on... um. He's friends with Andrew Tate. I forgot his fucking name. But there was like a video on TikTok and he had like elastic band. He was like, so this is like your family and this is you. You try to get away, but they bring you back down. And then yeah, yeah it's more bands. Video, yeah. Right? yeah. And it's just like, fuck, it's like kind of true. Yeah. And the only way you can get away from that is like if you snap the band. But the more you let people try to hold you down, the harder the resistance is to get away from that. And that kind of resonated with me. And I was like, no. Nah can't be doing that like whatever i want to do i'm gonna i'm gonna do it if i fail i fail like what's the worst i waste my time wow like fuck i got so much more time like you guys said i'm only 20 you guys are 20 20 like 21 22 yeah 21 bro yeah, yeah. it's just like fuck bro i would if i was trying to like stop everything if like say if everything failed right i failed at 21 22 23 24 and so on bro i'd probably like fucking end my life at like 50 yeah i'd be like oh fuck bro what can i do you know what i mean like Everything's all wasted, but like, like I said, we're all so young. You can do whatever the fuck, and 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 anything can change within like six months. You know, and like, bro, like you could, for example, you could go dead broke in six months. You could be a millionaire in six months. It just depends what you choose in life and what you want to do with that. So everything's just a choice. How I see things. Yeah, bro, that's awesome. Bro, that's fire. Hundred percent respect that. Appreciate it. Honestly, bro, I'd love to end on that note. Like, clean potty, bro. Hundred like, percent, bro. It was awesome. If you want to plug any of your stuff right now, bro, man. All I gotta say is just like, stay tuned for the OFM course, and it's free too. So fucking get onto that when I drop it. But other than that, follow me on Instagram at s dot e b b. Uh, join my free Telegram group for OFM if you want to learn how to do that. It's yeah. awesome, bro. Appreciate it. Appreciate bro. you coming on, bro. It was awesome talking to you. Thank you, boys. Thank you. All right, all right. Cheers for listening. See you later.